Good afternoon, good afternoon everyone and welcome to Table Talk with Brenda Perryman and I am Brenda Perryman and today we have our, two of our regular co-hosts and we have a guest co-host today. So I'd like to introduce my co-host or they introduce themselves. I'm Robert Thomas, uh, board member of the City of Detroit Board of Zoning Appeals. I'm Chris Sumrall, a servant um, for the citizens of the City of Detroit. Good afternoon, my name is Barry Ross, I'm the founder of Detroit Coalition Against Violence and Fair Exchange LLC, clothing business. Well, thank you for joining us today, Barry, and we're looking forward to some very enlightening conversation. We have a lot to talk about today, but as is our tradition, we always do an excerpt from On This Day in African American Life in Detroit by Ken Coleman. And on this day in 1990, the fifth annual Rock and Roll Hall of Fame ceremony is held in New York City. Inductees include Detroit's own Four Tops. The quartet, who hailed from Pershing and Northern High Schools, enjoyed a tremendous run, performing between 1953 and 1997 without a personnel change. That's a long, long time. Mm -hmm. God, they must have started really young. Their, their many sma smash hits include, Baby, I need your love. I can't help myself. I can't help myself. I can't help but sing. Sugar pie, honey bunch. Reach out and I'll be there. Standing in the shadows of love. Burn the debt. Still waters. I can't help it. I can't help it. I hear the names of the song and I have to sing them. Longtime Motown label mate Stevie Wonder had the pleasure of formally inducting or introducing Levi Stubbs, Abdul Duke Fakir, Ronaldo, Obi Benson, and Lawrence Payton during the ceremonies. Mm. And they always, what was their signature step? Does anyone know besides me? Come on. Uh, I don't know. I, I always hear them on the radio, so I, I've been. Oh, you Ooh, never got to, I know, I know what it was. Oh, no, yeah. There's yeah. some hits, though. I mean. <laughs> hits on the radio. Don't forget, what? Just Ask the Lonely was probably my oh, favorite song. Oh, that was my favorite one. In fact, uh, Beautiful I remember song. during that time I had a little boyfriend. <laughs> just as the lonely, they'll tell you. You so. Uh oh. oh. Oh, wow. Lord, <laughs> you're so, worse than me. So, no, I was okay. sort of on. I was sort of on. Yeah, but, um, you know, to these young bloods here, I would like to say, show me a step from one of your groups. Okay. Yeah. Is that a, a, that a challenge? Is that a uh, challenge? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> see, the Jackson 5 were out before you were even born, so, hey. Well, anyway, let's oh, go to a little man. bit of Boys news. And we're going to do a lot of state and local news today. Um, our first news story deals with Terry Lynn Land. She used to be the Secretary of State here in the state of Michigan, and she is going to be running for Congress in the seat that Carl Levin. Levin no. well, she's running against Carl Levin. Um, no, she's the no, she's no. A Republican nominee. He's um, stepping down. Yeah, he's, 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 he's retiring. Right, yeah. but she's not running against him. Right. Gary Peters, Peters plans to run for Carl Levin's seat. Yeah, yeah. opposed. Yeah, there are no other Democrats in that one. Mm -hmm. And um, she has outraised him. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, by a lot. Wow. Carl Levin, that is. No, Terry. No. Terry. Gary, Gary Peters. Peters. Gary Peters. Peters. Okay. Gary Peters. Carl Levin is stepping down after many years. Big loss. It, uh, it is a big loss. It is a big loss. He was very good. But right now, we got to look at the future. And it's very important to look out for the future. Uh -huh. And um, she's getting a lot of support. Well, well, and I'm not saying you have to vote Democratic, but she well, has. Well, on the terms of, of, of funds, she's contributed uh, handsomely to her own campaign. Yes, so she can write herself yeah. a check. Yeah, so she mm -hmm. has the uh, means to do that. And I think that. I, I believe she infused like 1.6 million of her own dollars wow. into yeah. the campaign, which quite led a, up to like 3.7 million. Quite a total. large amount of money. So. Um, I don't know if it necessarily represents um, true support one way or the other. Um, obviously, she believes in herself. We can say that for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. May I ask what her background is financially? Where's all this coming from? What did she do with the living? Or I don't know, except she's been rich for a long time. It's a lot of money. 
Daddy yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's been rich for a long time. I don't know if some of it was through marriage or whatever, but the point being is, as we know, through this state with the Republicans who are in office in this state, they're ramrodding bills through that are mm. doing no good for anybody. Lightning speed. Lightning well, speed. He's passed more bills, the governor. I'm and, sorry. And definitely not doing any good for the, the middle class and the, and the, and the poor um, in Michigan, period. Uh, they're really looking out for the, um, the upper middle class to, to the rich in this area. No question. Yeah. I mean, to, but it's like when they started taxing my pension, it was like, was there even a debate or discussion? You can just take this money out? Obviously, obviously that's the case and we're seeing even more, um, you know, what's going on in the city of Detroit right now with uh, emergency the, the emergency appointment of the emergency manager. So uh, we're getting a lesson in the law right now. And, and, and it's not going to change. lawlessness. Well, it's not going to change unless uh, the Michiganders come together and, and turn the state blue again and so they can dismantle some of these laws they've already put on the books. Well, this is something I say, and this is something I've seen over the years because I've been voting a long time. And the fact that we had Governor Engler who was against teachers, we had, um, and against the union and everything, he would get in every All time. Reform. He would still get in because they would still vote for him. They would still, I mean, and then same with, um, Snyder. Snyder looks like he's running unopposed. I don't care. I think he, he's running this time and he has Mark Schauer. Are you familiar with Mark Schauer? No. He's the designated Democratic, Democratic nominee. nominee. Yeah, and, and it will, quite frankly, it's kind of difficult to um, um, overcome a incumbent in any race. It's, it's, it's hard to do it. Um, now, I definitely wish uh, Schauer well, but uh, we'll see how the outcome is. May I say something? Case. Yes. Not to interrupt you. When Snyder first got in, he assured everybody that he was going to pass many bills. And he has, like we were talking about, he has passed bills probably in record speed. Yes. And, you know, last night, did you see the state of the address? I saw bits and pieces. Last night he said something interesting. That he, at, at, I was under the impression he said he wants to see the emergency managers go. And I don't believe that's his agenda at all. And um, our emergency manager in Detroit, their goal is to sell off all the assets. It's obvious to us. And, and they gonna, have been. We're, we're going to talk about that. We have Tom on the line. Good afternoon, Tom. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. How's it going, Tom? You know, Hello. in regards to Mark Shower, I mean, and I'm, I'm, I'm tired of hearing the early negativity in terms of the only candidate on the Democrat side for governor right now. Mark Schauer, he was a congressman who was elected from the west side of the state. I think he's from around about Benton Harbor or, or somewhere over in there. In Republican territory, he took out a sitting incumbent Republican to get down to uh, Congress in Washington. And he got caught up in that 2010 fiasco when them crazy teabag people and tea party people <laughs> came and launched their assault. And so, I mean, Mark Schauer, he's, I mean, is he known, known, no, but he's getting there. And um, my whole thing is right now, it appears as we speak right now, because there's no other candidate in the race, we've got to get behind and support this man. Because otherwise, what are we going to get again? We're going to get four years of Governor Snyder. No and we know what Governor Snyder's done. The first thing that he did when he got in there, he took a $2 billion tax break off the back of businesses. And what did he do? He put it on Brenda's back, your three guests back, my back, and all the other people here in this, in, in this state. And, you know, he talked about, well, you know, we've got a surplus. I guess you do have a surplus. <laughs> right. When I heard that, I said. Brenda's pension <laughs> and all the other pensioners, you know, who are receiving a pension. And, uh, you know, and, and we're right now we are, what is it, I think we're, we got the third highest unemployment rate in this country. And he's talking about Michigan being the comeback state. I mean, come on, you know, it, it might be coming back, but it, I mean, you know, it's going in milliliters in terms of the progress that it's making. Yeah, but Tom. Yeah. I know that Mark Shower has been to the area, and then at one point I was asked, 
uh, about him being on my show, but it was just like because he'd be in town that day. I'll see if I can get him there. Uh, um, okay, see if you could get him there. And a lot of people are very positive about him, but I, I think he needs to be bigger about his message. I don't know what his message is yet. And I realize he's been to meetings in the city and so okay. forth. But I don't know what his message is. Okay, but in, in regards to Mr. Shower, I'm a member of the Wayne County Democratic Black Caucus. I'm an executive board member. And on this coming Wednesday, the 22nd, at 6 o'clock, down at the AFSCME building at 600 West Lafayette, Mark Shower will be there. So those in the listening audience, if you want to come, come on down. It's, it's, an, it's an open meeting. There's parking in the back of the building and across the street. There's also a parking, you know, secured parking. So, you know, if you want to see the man and hear the man, he will be down at the AFSCME building at 600 West Lafayette um, on Janu January 22nd. And the meeting, we start at 6 o'clock. Well, I've gotten emails about him because okay. I get a lot of Democratic emails and everything. But I think he needs to put bigger messages out on social media, probably some kind of videos that he could put on Facebook or something to make I don't even know what the man looks like and um, I'm sorry I if you're running for an office this big you got to come out the box you got to come out fighting I remember we all remember Snyder's launch don't we I'm a nerd <laughs> right 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 yeah but it resonated and some of these same talk show some Turned of these other the talk show hosts were saying oh I think that's so intriguing I like that I like that Black talk show host. Yeah, it, it, his, his slogan is one, one turf nerd. But uh, to, to, to uh, Shower's uh, credit, um, I don't think the media is giving him as much attention as, he, uh, as Snyder did when he was coming in. As well, you got to make your news. You need right. a, he yeah. needs a better p PR person. He That's needs to right. make his news. And I have heard him on Facebook. I saw a lot of his literature out there, yeah. social media. I've seen that definitely. It's just that I haven't I'm seen him learner. in the in the Metro Detroit area at all, making noise or uh, or anything. And I know it's uh, last year is particularly. Yeah, some people will say it's early, uh, but I think the earlier the better is. I think it's is never too early. To upseat a, uh, um, an incumbent. Unseat a, yeah. an incumbent. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I I just I understand. And I'm not trying to be negative, mm -hmm. Tom. I'm just saying what he probably needs to do. Yeah, well, I he mean, needs some to do things. More of it is what it is. And yeah, absolutely. You know, he, you know, I mean, Michigan, somebody Michigan, maybe. Michigan's a big state, okay? Because I know he's been to a couple of functions at the 14th congressional district. He was at our Christmas party, and which happened in December. And also, he was in. He's 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 been to the Wayne County Democratic Black Caucus a time or two. He's going to be there this coming Wednesday at six o'clock, as I said, down at the AFSCME building at 600 West Lafayette. And so, I mean, you know, he's. He, he's getting, he's making his rounds and, and, and this kind of thing. So. Well, he needs to make it a little louder, make his rounds and be a little louder with them. He really does, and he needs to, we got to get some re name recognition. You know how people are. Yeah. They vote about people, vote for people that they, people vote how they feel about a candidate. Oh, I, I, know. I all no the time. No backgrounds, no background. I, all the time. I mean, things, I like him. That's the first thing <laughs> that people say. <laughs> I like him. I don't know him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, I can't, I don't endorse really, but I just don't know him, and he just has to do a lot better for me. I mean, he's a, he, 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 I mean I've personally stood face to face with him and talked with him, and he's a genuinely nice guy, and he's very knowledgeable. Okay. And, and we don't know how he's doing on uh, the west coast of the state. I mean, he could What's be doing, um, you know, could be doing. Pretty good over there, and thinking that hey, we had he ought already he you know the the west the east side the southeast side is a pretty pretty predominantly democratic area, so he may but just that, that it doesn't even say that people are going to come out and vote. Yeah, yeah. there are mm. a lot of Democrats who don't even come mm -hmm. out and vote. There's a whole big initiative that needs to be done, and you exactly. need to hire the best PR persons that you can, and that's exactly what Snyder voting did. in general, right? Yeah. Voting period, yeah. right? Period. So I don't know. Thank you for your call, Tom. Okay, thanks for taking Always got it stirring up. You may want to call back after some of these <laughs> topics we got on today. Appreciate it, Tom. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right, bye. Bye. Now, um, the 14th District. Now, I just have it listed there, but there are some candidates running 
in the 14th district. Can any of you name any of the ones that are running I so think, far? I um, think the 14th district, congressional district, uh, um, what was that, Rudy Hopps? Is he yes. one of the candidates, um, amongst others? Burt Johnson, Burt Johnson. Sen State Senator Burt yeah. Johnson. We have um, Vince Gregory, State Senator. Isn't he a state senator? I think so. Sure. Vince Gregory. We have Mayor Brenda Lawrence. She's running. It's like every time a big uh, thing is, she's she runs She's from Southfield, a Southfield. Yeah. She's the yeah. Southfield mayor. Yeah. Yes. And there are others who are coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. I believe there's one more. Somebody else I missed. Well, Rudy Hobbs' name is really resonating, um, picking up, uh, especially amongst, like I said, social media. Yeah, um, but he doesn't know anything about the city. I know Rudy. I know, I know everyone personally. Okay. And he doesn't, I've heard him on radio, I've heard him on Angelo Henderson's show, and any time they ask something about the sp city, he can't get specific with anything. Well, hopefully he's listening in right now so he can uh, hone in on <laughs> the area I'm he's I'm weak just, in. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, to me, because the city is very important, uh, as well as the suburbs, mm -hmm. and that district is made up of the city Part and the suburbs. City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. my thing is, Learn to talk to everybody. What, pro, excuse me, what are the boundaries of the 14th district? Does anybody know? Well, I know it goes Southfield, Oak Park, uh, uh, Gross All Point. Parts of these yeah, parts, parts of Detroit, yeah, Gross Park Point, District. Highland Park. That's big. Pontiac. Uh, just a, it stretches. It really, really stretches. Yeah. And that was due, of course, to gerrymandering. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm the last angry woman today. <laughs> I'm the last about this because, you know, here we have the right to vote. There are people who get into office who don't deserve to be in mm. office. There are people who don't do anything. Our de Democratic, our state Democratic um, Party just seems to be it's very light. weak to it's me. It's light, yep. It's very weak. What are, what are we afraid of? You know, and I just... Duggan swears to build this up. But he's one man. I know. And, uh, but there's know, a drive to build it up. I think they need to eradicate some infighting, um, too, amongst um, the Democratic base here in Michigan. I mean, you hear about different district uh, type of issues um, coming out, and it comes out in the public. It pours right on out um, about mm -hmm. different people running for this and that. It's pretty contentious. Wow. Well, today is a very, I mean, this year is a very important year. So hopefully, I don't know what we could do to get people out to vote. I don't know why people don't feel it's their responsibility. Because you benefit or you don't benefit by your action or inaction. They don't think it matters. That m most people, in my opinion, have, have been beaten down, lied to, cheated on for so long and not seen the changes necessary and they figure that my vote won't make a difference. And they've lost, uh, really, a lot of people have just lost faith and hope in the system that has been broken for so long. Yeah, and they don't think their vote matters. They don't think their vote matters. They don't think they matter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I heard something on the radio the other day. Someone had called in and said, yeah, if they build some more factories uh, and give some people jobs, that whole factory thing is going by the way of buttonhole shoes. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. They're not going to build any more factories. People have to get their education. They're going to have to get training, even no if question. it's not education. And that's something we need to harp on. I'm yeah. on a soapbox. Come well, on, say something. No, not, we're not, well, I mean, you, you, you <laughs> hit the nail on the head there. I mean, people... They have to know that technology is really running the country right now versus, uh, you know, in the olden days it was manufacturing jobs. Now mm -hmm. it's shifting, and people got to catch up um, with this shift. What's You're so cute talking about the olden days. Those, <laughs> are, those are my days. <laughs> Everybody got out of high school. All the guys got out, got a job at the plant. Those days are over. But it's a responsibility um, to, to look to be more creative. Um, and... It's not that you can't have a job, but you're going to have to supplement income somewhere yeah. now because the wages that um, our dads would get um, in comparison to cost of living, if we were to do those same jobs today, it would pale in comparison. So look for opportunities to supplement. Entrepreneurship is uh, something that I'm a big um, fan and uh, cheerleader for. And so there are opportunities 
for us to do business within you know our own communities and uh, you know personally I feel that that's an avenue that we really need to bolster up the right. entrepreneurial and spirit. And people who are entrepreneurs like yourself like Barry Ross you know more the more that you encourage people to do that and show them how they could do that a lot of times people don't know how they can do that. Brenda I, the people that worked in the big three that lost their jobs, let's say there's 750 or 700,000 people in Detroit, and let's say, just to figure, 150,000 men and women that worked in the plants that lost their jobs. Most of them have a major fear of technology. I'm 62, and I look good for 62, but I, I, when I was 50 <laughs> years promotion. old, when I was 50, I got my first computer and I swear I didn't know how to find a power button. Now I'm on the computer. Most people are afraid. How many people have you seen have a smartphone and you say, how's your address book? What address book? I just use this as a phone. A lot of people in their late 40s, 50s, and 60s are lost and afraid. You can give them technology classes. I think you can offer but they're so afraid. They need to know that they can do it. They need to know that it's user-friendly. And another yes. way to do it is probably, say, a station like WHPR, just start offering a show that has, starts with beginning computer. Great idea. Beginning. <laughs> but there also has to be a desire. No question. Um, and I think that that's huge because right now there are opportunity to go and learn and become more computer savvy but there has to be a desire basically mm -hmm. you have to have a will for it mm -hmm. and, and what happens you know as a person gets older whether they're in their 30s 40s 50s or 60s as this young good-looking guy said <laughs> um, people get set in their ways right. and they're not open to new opportunities and so but the the thing that that is the case that what worked yesterday will not work today and will definitely be obsolete tomorrow Absolutely. So, um, you know, the hope is is that um, an, an, an entrepreneur like yourself can grab someone else and, and show them that, hey, if I can do it, I'm no better than you, you can do it as well. No question. That's absolutely right. Now, I forgot to put it on the run of show, but I have it as far as our news stories about what the bankruptcy di judge did yesterday in denying um, Detroit's Defense. pension debt deal. Can anyone speak to that? Uh, well, essentially, um, it looked like Judge Rhodes basically said it was a bad deal and that he believed that the city could, could do better. And um, it's, it was surprising to me um, that um, the emergency manager, um, the governor, uh, wouldn't want to do better themselves. You know, that it would take uh, a, a judge to say, hey, I think you guys can do better in a court if you guys pursue this to try to either sue those lenders or whatever recourse that they have. And um, I think that it's a win, um, um, be that a soft win right now, but we'll see how it plays out. Well, you know, my mother used to, uh, I used to <laughs> sew, but I would sew so fast <laughs> and half do. And she called me hot thread and burning needle. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Orr has been trying to do the hot thread and burning needle thing just to get it over with. You know what well, I'm saying? To, to, to his credit, uh, he brought up the fact that, hey, I think we need to sue these banks um, oh, okay. before. And I think this is that, that green light for Orr to go ahead and do so. Now, they're in negotiations about how they proceed regarding uh, negotiating this deal. But I think the Judge Rose tell him, hey, you guys have a case here. You may want to pursue it. And that will probably give them more leverage to negotiate even better. Exactly, uh, exactly. That will, that will kind of raise those eyebrows yeah. of those lenders and say, well, hey, maybe we should be more flexible. It's not going it to be that easy. To renegotiate right. Right. Um, right. the terms and conditions of, uh, of the, the debt. So that, loan, that loan was written fraudulently. Yeah. Really? That's the real deal. Yeah. Oh. They created a loan with an interest rate, they call them interest swaps. Was yeah. this 6, a Mayor yeah. This went yeah. down, believe it or not, Kevin Orr's, Kevin Orr had something to do with this loan initially. If they look, and they know this now, that's the real deal. The, the fundamentals of the loan to Detroit were written to balloon to interest rates that were out of this world. Yeah. This loan is a fraudulent loan. 
Yeah. That's why this judge doesn't Predatory. want to pass that's it. Something He's that, recognizing it. That's yeah. the real story. That's something the judge was saying. He was like, yeah. hey, we're, we're, it, this, is, this is a bad deal, and we're not going to let Detroit fall into the same trap. The sucker deal. And, you know, they want to, you know, for or and the, the banks to really get down to the nitty-gritty and renegotiate the whole thing. Um, we probably owe 10% of what the actual loan yeah. calls for. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know what it is, but it's way out of shape. Well, the reason why I said hot thread and burning needle is because it seems like they're trying to do all of this in this 18 months that this man right. is supposed to be here, and they're just trying to make everything so cut and dry, cut and dry, cut and dry, you know, and get it over with. Or, you know, when they turn it back over to the, the elected mayor, yeah. um, it would lead to more of um, the bankruptcy attorneys for the city or for Orr's firm to be more involved. Uh, maybe not Orr himself, oh. but people. Is that Jones Day? Yeah, yeah. Jones Day, um, since they own the books right now, is um, a representative for the They city. are getting rich. They're going to be here for a while. I don't, see that, I don't see that just going away anytime soon. Okay, did any of you get a chance to read about the water deal? Uh, um, because the rates are going up. I can't, I, I don't want to even, I'm embarrassed to tell you my la what I paid on my last water bill. Well, I had an opportunity to read a little bit of it, and um, the consensus is that, you know, rates are going to go up even more. And obviously there's the contention between city and suburbs uh, with regard to, um, you know, uh, how the water department is ran, who should carry the burden of, um, updating the system and things like that. Which is interesting. Which is interesting <laughs> because, because there, there is a shared responsibility. Yeah. Um, but I think that when, when the title Detroit is attached to anything, there is a, a contempt that uh, outsiders have toward contributing to the upkeep or maintenance of even though they benefit from it. Right, and that's so true. And so I think that um, um, uh, uh, Mr. Brooks Patterson, he... Uh, honestly ha admitted that we are going to have to uh, take some responsibility. Um, the Mac Macomb County Executive, he was a little bit more firm into uh, saying... Now well, that's who I thought should have run for mayor. Mark. I mean for governor, Mark Hackle. Yeah. I like him. Yeah, well, you know, he's kind of he's kind of firm, um, and, and I think it's more political, his, his, uh, you know, his jargon right now, because he, he knows himself that there's with everything that's going on with the city um, and the updates and everything that's going on as far as Kevin Orr, the governor, there's going to be money that's going to be pouring into uh, the water department and it's going to come from Macomb County, it's going to come from Oakland County, and it's going to come from Wayne County as well. So, Well, and people who are renting who may say, well, this won't affect me, yes, it will because it will raise your rental rates. Yeah. Absolutely. I can see that. Um, and, you know, I, I think What's, what's fascinating to me about this is the fact that they're pushing for a regionalization of uh, the water. Now it seems as though mm -hmm. Patterson is pushing back, saying, hey, you know, before you regionalize this, won't Detroit go ahead and pay absorb, that $9 absorb million dollars the, to, the to restore yeah, it? Absorb the, uh, the debt. To, <laughs> yeah, uh, for maintenance it. and things like that. And then, hey, you know, they give it to us. then we're thinking about uh, regionalizing this whole deal. The yeah. water is our holy grail. That's the last thing that's we want to the, give control of. That's the last we thing. We really need to get on, on board with the water. If he takes over the water, gives control to the suburbs, it's all over. That's our main revenue source here. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it'll be interesting how this whole thing plays out because that's where, what people are thinking that or is leaning towards is uh, regionalizing the whole and, um, yeah. water department. And that's, that's been a topic of conversation mm -hmm. ever since... Uh, you know, uh, I can remember, and especially since this bankruptcy has been looming, looming over the city, um, you know, forming this authority um, and uh, giving the uh, proverbial crumbs to the city to, to let it go. Um, I think in this article it, it mentioned um, giving the city, uh, you know, 50, 60, maybe 70 million or something for to, to let go of control. That's chump change. It's chump change. What's interesting, though, is also that what the article didn't mention was uh, a Duggan or um, Fakano interview in regards of, uh, you know, what do you think about the water board, um, this issue? So okay, guys, we got to move ahead. Uh, Duggan appointees control street lighting 
land bank initiative. So they were just saying that he um, he <coughs> has, he has gained major majority control of the two authorities overseeing anti blight and lighting initiatives, helping him to fulfill a uh, promise that hopefully we'll have street lights and. Um, take care of a lot of those issues about the blight in the city because the blight invites a lot of crime. It invites crime, but it also invites a mentality and more of a spirit uh, right. of, of gloom and doom. Yeah. For the and, children especially. For the mm -hmm. children, for individuals who, visitors. the visitors who yeah. come into this Tourists. town and they get a snapshot of what Detroit is and they're not, they're not able to go and see you know the, the the beautiful parts of the city. They see a, a, burn, a series of burned out houses. Well that's Detroit for them. But I think that it was important, um, especially on the back end of uh, Mayor Duggan's promise to give me six months. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. for him to put out that uh, appeal and not have any authority, it would be, uh, it would be uh, you know, a death sentence to him to kind of you know, go out on the limb and put his reputation out and have no authority to, to implement some visible changes. And I think that these are two um, areas that people can actually see some things going on yeah. versus you know versus the behind the scenes um, and yeah. this, this is one of the areas where Orr and Duggan has been working together um, negotiating what powers that uh, Duggan be taking over and quite frankly over this past week this was I mean a lot of this stuff two weeks ago um, this was this started um, since they uh, got rid of the last lighting board Whenever you, oh, yeah. and what happens is, I think it's every three to four years, I believe four years, four year terms, whenever you put in a new mayor, that whole board um, goes away. Mm -hmm. So last week, they um, um, appointed the new members uh, of the, both uh, the Lighting Committee Commission and um, the Blight Commission. Mm -hmm. so. I just want to make a comment on both areas if I can. You know, we board up abandoned houses. Right. There's 140 some odd thousand homes, not counting maybe, t I can't even say, maybe 10, 15, 20,000 abandoned buildings. Over and beyond the blight and the sentiment, rape, molesting, they're havens for predators, not, not squatters, but plotters that want to take out people in the neighborhood. They stash bodies. Yeah. We boarded up a home last year where a young man was shot from a high school three days before we boarded the house up. It was abandoned, and they were having a party. I mean, it's, we know what's going on in these houses. It's much more than they look bad. So if there's a street where there's 15 houses and 10 of them are abandoned, and elderly or the weak or the infirmed are living there, and children, the reason I said children is because Babies are walking to school mm -hmm. past this. What are they supposed to be thinking? Then they get to a school where the teachers aren't showing them what they used to. Yeah. They're working under a bureaucracy where they don't even really all have all the equipment, the tools to teach. The children and might not have eaten say, breakfast. Is this my life? Right. Is this my life? Right. Well, they won't even question it. They will just automatically assume that this is, is right. This is my it's life. It's the norm. Mm -hmm. it's, that's norm. what's bad. They've accepted the abnormal as the normal in Detroit, and I think apathy, and we see apathy in the churches, not getting involved. I have petitioned. I, agree. I have petitioned um, um, councils of, of pastors. Let me board up the homes around here. Let me get the men. And you know, I've been to seventy-five churches. Can we get the people in this church to come out with us at night, the men? We'll show you how to patrol in the area. Three men, one man, no men show up. Mm. When you talk about voting, mm. there's an absence. But there's an absence with everything. And, and, I, and, and I agree totally with you. There's an absence of community responsibility. Mm -hmm. And um, being a public servant in the city for quite some years um, as a firefighter, mm. I have uh, crawled in those homes while they're on fire mm. only to find out after the fire that there's tons of needles on the floor mm -hmm. or drug paraphernalia, mm -hmm. um, not to mention the countless other things that I don't even need to explain that, that we see. And so mm -hmm. um, to piggyback off of off your comments, they, they are a haven for all negative activity. There's nothing positive that's coming out of an abandoned, open to trespass home. Um, there is a certain um, responsibility to handle this correctly though. 
because the city wants to uh, create a better image. You just can't go and just tear down houses. There's a certain process um, that the city needs to adhere to uh, so that uh, it protects itself as far as liability and things like that. Um, so I'm a fan of, of, of uh, Mayor Duggan getting this uh, control. What I, what I believe is I'm going to see now is we're going to see more um, private funds pour in and support. Yeah. Um, I had an opportunity of sitting in a group of folks with uh, Mr. Dan Gilbert, and he said one of his number one objectives Security was line. to get rid of like every it. single abandoned um, eyesore home in the city of Detroit. Yeah, he's in on that. And he's definitely yeah. in on that, and I think that th this is a, a move that is going to, you know, marry uh, city politics with um, a business leader like uh, Mr. Gilbert. What, what's shocking to me, what's, what you just said, uh, Barry, is the fact that you're saying that you you spoke with 75 churches and only a handful of individuals came. I out? I have addressed to, to get rid of life? a minimum of 75 churches individually and three councils, different councils of different religious um, yeah. factions, and and hardly any support from anywhere. I was at you know I, there's some great churches, yeah. but there's some churches that mo the majority are self-serving. I hate to say it. Okay. I'm not even going to get into that on your show. I know, okay. I know, because I just feel that, you know, the areas even just around the churches, if the people could keep that together, That's you right. know. Yeah, maybe someone could answer this question for me. You know, riding around, you see, um, I guess you would consider them Wayne County inmates. They do uh, cleanups and stuff like I don't see it going on in the city. Yeah. Why is it that you see that in the burbs where they're, well, you you know, I don't. I don't understand. You see it on the interstates, up here many but times. Um, you don't see them inside the city re regarding, on, you know, the, the streets and whatnot. But you see them on the city, on, on the interstate, cleaning up and things. Uh, well, like even that, on so. the interstate, I don't see guys, them nearly as much. Guys, so we got to move on because I'm about to hang myself with all this bad news. <laughs> uh, I just want to be hopeful. Sorry. I'm, I want to be hopeful. No, well, it's it not has bad to be. news when no, they created the well, Blight and okay, Light Commission. But just yeah. hearing about just. Well, this is to help eradicate it. So right. hopefully this plan goes... Well, uh, let's go Stephen quickly. <laughs> the Detroit's <laughs> new bus system chief pledges a system that you can rely on, mm. that people don't have to stand at a bus mm. stop two hours. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also that the, that the city workers, those bus drivers, feel safe. Yeah. Right. And, um, Supplying yeah, security. Yeah. I, I, I think that that's going to be integral as Detroit becomes even more of a cosmopolitan, even more of a, um, a savvy city. People are going to look to public transportation, and they want to feel safe um, while they're on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a tr mass transit system. People are going to want to feel safe. No one's going to want to, you know, get on there if they're not feeling safe. So, well, well it'll be interesting to see how this plays out because I believe Dirks come from the smart bus system um, in the suburbs, mm -hmm. and now he's over here in the urban area in the city, and I want to see him how, see how he, you know take all that into consideration, safety, on time, and all of it. Um, well, because their issues don't, what they're not the same call issues. It? In the yeah. olden days, <laughs> uh, in the olden days, I didn't have anything about dropping my little money in the bus and just going, I, I didn't even think of things like somebody beating up a bus yeah. driver. Right, it never happened. Never happened, those things just <laughs> didn't happen, or if they happened, they was in right. some kind of isolation <laughs> because we didn't hear about it. I went on bus dates, and me and my, <laughs> I mean downtown. Bus and dates? Bus my dates. boyfriend would walk over my house, then we'd go to the bus stop, we'd catch the bus downtown. I want to do bus something uh, before yeah. I do something. And, and we'd, ca we'd go to the show, and then we'd come out, cause go we'd go to dinner, we'd go to the show, come and back. then we'd come out, it'd no be question. 11.30 at night, and then the bus, we waited at the bus stop, not even worried about a predator. <laughs> I mean, come on, that was the older days. You hear that, women? Sounds horse and carriage. Bus dates, women. So, you know, <laughs> don't be afraid to get on that bus. Yeah, don't misinterpret what that means either. <laughs> I, I, I'm right. But it's um, on the bus, and the bus was a safe. Was that when the city had, like, a movie theater to go to and things yeah, like that? Yeah, all kinds yeah, downtown. Yeah, they did. But, you they know, eight the movie theaters downtown. some of my cousins wanted to come in the theater and just fight all the time, so they closed the theater. So I'm just yeah. telling the truth. I'm telling it like it is. We had about 10 movie theaters downtown, and uh, I bet you I could name lot. most of them. At yeah. least 10. Uh, oh, wow. Grand Opera House was a movie theater. That was a Grand Circus. Oh, wow. Uh, the Madison Fillmore and Michigan. Was, the Fillmore was the um, Palms, I think. Yes. 
And then around the corner was the Adams That's on right. Adams. Madison. I mean, and of course, there was the Fox. United the, Artists. I, I, the United Artists. I did not know all this. So. Well, and more. This day in Detroit. Tell to put that in there. No, you can learn that from people who were here in the olden days. All right. Um, now, about, okay, we're going to go through this quickly. Uh, about I was reading that the dash cam wasn't working when they stopped City Councilman Cushenberry. So they're wondering why wasn't that working, because it should have been working and everything. Why would the police leave without a working dash cam when, that night? And it seems like every day, and I got, this kind of made me real sensitive. I was watching the news, and sometimes I don't like to watch the news, because they had three negative black men stories. Oh, surprise, surprise. Great. <laughs> I said, oh, this is killing me. Um, um, with regard to uh, the Cushenberry traffic stop, um, there is uh, protocols that are supposed to be followed at the end of a shift and at the beginning of a shift. And it's my understanding that you know, those officers uh, had a responsibility to make sure that the mic and the camera was functional. And if it wasn't for them to report it to their supervisor. Now, obviously, this is there's still some investigation going on internally. Uh, but it would be interesting to see if that was documented and what steps the supervisor uh, actually took to uh, to make sure that you know that their procedure was followed. So, so what do you? Uh, you know, I, I didn't care too much about the dash cam. Um, I think it's important. It, 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 I think it's, it's, it's important, it's important yeah, now in it's these days. Uh, you want to record what happens, it but what actually happened with um, the Cushenberry stop? I mean, I believe that's recorded regarding uh, between testimony. Um, <laughs> testimony between uh, Cushenberry and the officers. But now, regardless, I think the issue here is Cushenberry having both uh, uh, a, a, his friend in the car with, with, the, with, with marijuana, the marijuana and then an open container in the car and, at the same time. And a suspended license. But that's, that's important as well, but there, there needs to be a new uh, shift in, in mindset in the city that these little things are important. Yeah. It's, it's definitely important for a dash because it could have been something even more tragic and so you need if to, you to be honest I didn't even know that the city of Detroit can afford dash can cameras all right so I didn't know they were in the car it's, it's, anyway it's, it's, that's, that's um, this is news to me and it's good news is out there that hey they do have dash cameras now um, I thought that was you know something this but in ma majority of other cities do you think that these um, these accusations are going to uh, cloud him continually or do you think he could make up for them or something? Well, I think that even more than him, it is another conversation or distraction from what's the work that's going on in the city of Detroit. Will it stick to him? I don't know. I don't think, I don't think that this is going to be a talking point in June. But I think that the, the, media, that, the, the media that we have... Unless uh, something else happens. Unless something else happens. But... Um, uh, back to the back to the point. A classic um, problem in the city, being a uh, being a firefighter, is that um, we don't do the little things, and it's only until something big happens and we're like, oh, you know, it's a big deal. Those officers should make sure that those dash cam cameras and mics are working because it could have been uh, okay. you know, anything. I shouldn't have brought it up. Yeah, I yeah. think the issue is um, more focused on Cushenberry, but uh, yeah, I should have. I should have because. Uh, people are now talking about character and a lot of it seems like every day they had a new something well the big one another big one was about you know how he uh, huh? ransacked his house no he stripped it stripped it yes well I hate to even say you can say well, that. Yeah, well he did yeah, he stripped yeah. his house and you know and it's it's now blight yeah um, and people and come in here and put in you know 100k to to uh, uh, you know, make has everything he made right. A, has he made a statement re regarding that? I, mm -hmm. I haven't. No, I don't think he's going to make any statements. He, he needs to say out of the media right now. Yeah, Brenda. Yeah. Yes. It seems to me, across the board, and I had this in my organization, that standards and practices and ethics, and outside of your organization, need to be exuded in society. We talk about character. If if I'm a football player and I'm great on the field. I really need to show the world I'm great off the field. So we need to, no matter, especially celebrities, people in government. Along with fame comes responsibility. Absolutely. So, and, and I'm surprised Politics. that some organizations yeah. don't have 
this in place where there's some kind of penalty or in general. It's an ethics type of yeah, thing. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. And, and he's being in, uh, investigated right now ethically in regards to, the, especially that police stop um, by the inspector general. So, If I have any advice for Cushenberry, take care of all these matters with lightning speed. Yeah. If, if he wants to move on and we want to forget about him right away he needs to start taking care of business on every issue right away and that's i would clear everything up however that whatever that means in including legally he represented somebody improperly um looks yeah, like what was and, that about and he the, the his license law license was suspended for i believe like 60 days or not um he's got he's 90 he needs days to take care of himself yeah Definitely. Yeah. Need to pray for him. But let's uh, let's uh, let's go optimistic for the next few minutes. The <laughs> Lions have a new coach. Mm. I think it was a good pickup. Um, <laughs> as we both, uh, I think mo majority of us heard uh, yesterday, when uh, Stephen A. Smith had a, a differing opinion about uh, uh, Jim Catwell being the, the new coach. He actually rated it a B, yeah. versus a, a A, um, in which. Uh, you know, I think he was spot on with. Um, I don't think he's a maybe a Super Bowl coach um, at the time, but I think he's going to be able to build the players up and, and, and eradicate a lot of the issues. And, and I think that based on what we know, what we have in the Lions team, we have great talent. talent. We've got um, yeah. we've got a, a, a loyal fan base. What we do need is structure and discipline and someone who is going to hold these players accountable on and off the field. Yeah. And from his interview, his initial press conference, that looks to be the type of person mm -hmm. and the type of character that exudes from him. You know, he talked extensively about his family background and more than even his football uh, prowess, that is what stuck out with me, you know, basically describing the type of person he is. And so a team reflects their coach's personality, mm -hmm. you know, and so if he's just haphazard and laid back, then they will be, yeah. if, if he's mentally tough, then they will. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was impressed with him. Um, I think that Stephen A. did give a, a, a great um, grade as far as a B. A B is a pretty good grade yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in NFL. We've been having like F's. he said, and people have to, have to know this yeah. that Wizen Hut or what what was the man's name? Yeah. He did not want to come to Detroit. Yeah. That was the thing. People like that we should have gotten him. He, he didn't was the number come. one number one pick. And quite mm -hmm. frankly, uh I mean Jim Catwell led a Super Bowl ready team in Indianap in Indianapolis to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Um and which I believe Detroit Lions is a Super Bowl ready team if he can get everybody disciplined in that organization. But can he convince the whole team that he's a leader? You have to have respect. If you respect me and you believe in me and you trust me that I got you and that we're going to work as a team, we are so split and we've been split inside internally for so many years. Mm -hmm. If they like this I guy and believe in this guy. I think it's going to happen. I hope Actually, so. Well, uh, he's you know. a quarterback type of coach yeah. and you have a defensive several background, quarterbacks though. yeah with yeah, a defensive, defensive background. background and he has several na you know nationally known just great quarterbacks you know gave him excellent reviews they you know they changed their game was changed because of Cowell um, yeah, including Peyton Manning it was he yeah. gave it all up to Cowell Super Bowl champions um, that hey he made me a great quarterback and you get those leaders like, mm -hmm. you know, Stafford. If he can mold Stafford into a great quarterback, he can get the rest of the leaders to go along with it. The team has to um, um, come up, rise up, and discipline, help discipline the rest of the team, too. The captain's there. And Stafford has made some, excuse me, some very cocky statements really? lately about him not needing to hear from an outside source because he needs some help. We'll see how that relationship goes. <laughs> yes. He needs, someone needs to be able to reach him, yeah. to teach him he's still a young quarterback. Well, I don't know why. I mean, you may say I'm a girl, but I understand football. I've understood you it got women since sports before kids. you two were born, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, I can, and I'm, I can tell things about people. I just think that Stafford needs to go to another team. I'm just going to say it like that. We'll, we'll I see. think that our standards are too low. I think Stafford needs I, to go I, to another. We'll, we'll see with this new this coach how he um, mm -hmm. how he plays this, how this and, whole thing plays and out. And as, as much as, as and, and as much as uh, Caldwell is is going to be on trial, 
know that Stafford, eyes are looking at him now as well because right. he's had his fair share of years to grow as a quarterback. He's shown that he has the talent. It's the mental discipline that he and other the rest of the team yeah. haven't shown. So trust me, if Caldwell leaves, I guarantee you this, if he leaves on a bad note, Stafford won't be that far behind. Okay, I think that the biggest monkey on Caldwell's back is the Lions organization. And we won't even have to talk about that because that organization But also is the greatest cool. opportunity. Well, I'm because if he can if that uh, a, a Q did ha hire a Kappa in this um, <laughs> conversation, too. Oh, uh, Martin Mayhew, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Jim Cotwell. Alpha yes. Kappa, Alpha <laughs> Society Incorporated. Anyway, uh, <laughs> entertainment, we had a little bit. We just had, a, we have a couple of minutes, a few minutes. We had Tamara Maori, who's one of those Maori twins. She got on Oprah Winfrey's show and talked about um, the fact that she's gotten a lot of cruel texts and everything because she's married to a white man. It's, it's, a, it's unbelievable that this is still going on. And her parents are interracial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's, it's still a real problem. Um, you know, case in point, I won't subject myself to this criticism, but imagine Rob walking down the street with a nice, attractive, you know, white, white girl. He would get all type of looks and comments and things like that, and that's real. And so there is, uh, there's from both sides, from the white to black and the black to white, you know, you, there's a ignorance that's still out there, you know, and it doesn't matter if it's, uh, if it's regarding sexuality, if it's regarding racial preference or things like that. You just have people out there who, who, who have uh, an opinion and are stupid, you know, about... You know, it's funny, and I want to get to Barry in a moment, but it was funny. My son, you know, my daughter-in-law is white, and uh, my, my son and Laura, they were at a restaurant in Royal Oak. This was before they had kids or something, but they were there, and they said another interracial couple walked in, and my son said, he looked at them and said, you know, like that. <laughs> He's so silly. But uh, Barry, you've dated black women. Most of my life, I have dated interracially. So, and, I, and when I was old enough to drink, I came to all the bars in Detroit that my friends would never step in, which were predominantly black bars. I used to go to La remember Lafayette Orleans? Of course. It was the greatest there. bar in Detroit <laughs> where all the athletes used to go and upscale, and you know, 1300 Lafayette. I, it's like this, I believe. Racism across the board is probably never going to leave the world. It's worse in the United States than it is in Europe, but it's ongoing all the time. Racism is what's happening between Lansing and Detroit, I'm convinced. And I really believe yeah, if, you, if, you, if you really love somebody, I know this is easier said than done, but if you love somebody, you've got to block all this other negative stuff coming. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and then you know people might say, or you're, let's say you're, black, you're white or black, either way, and your parents, you know you're getting married, I can say, but what about the babies you're going to have? You're going to have, you know, biracial children. How, how is that going to be for them? You're going to be putting this in the world. It doesn't matter. It really to the people that are really in love, you got to be, you got to go with conviction. If you don't have conviction, then you don't belong with them or though. You know what I'm saying? Right. You've got to have conviction, yeah, actually, with everything. And the bottom line is there are just uh, a slew full of ignorant comments coming exactly. from right. the exactly. public that don't even matter in their relationship. Would um, either of you date outside your race? Um, you know, I, I've never had before, um, but I'm, I'm not... Um, You're not don't be scared. Don't haven't, be scared. I haven't foreclosed a thought. Um, yeah, don't be scared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Chris? I'm putting them on the spot. I just love what I'm doing. Don't do that, bro. <laughs> I, my story is similar to Rob. I, I, I haven't before, um, but being raised in Detroit and then relocating down to Tennessee, I was around, you know, um, you know, white folks yeah. a lot. And... Uh, you know, I saw some cute, some, some, some cute, some cute white girls, cute black girls, and so I wouldn't and, take uh, it off the table. You know, that's why I'm coming from D.C. I'm born and raised here. You know, been working in D.C. for some years in the East Coast, um, and you see a lot of interracial couples, um, exactly. especially in Virginia, in the D.C. area. Period. The, the, the South actually, the South is actually racist yeah. there, and uh, no one has a problem with that. One more comment. Yeah. You know me, Brenda. I'm with everybody. Yeah, her, her, her yeah real quick. 
I've been with every conceivable radical group in Detroit, practically <laughs> on the streets, whatever, the Nation Islam, you name it. But there is the school of thought that if you are black, you are impuring your race. You are disseminating our count, right? You're, you're, wh what about the pure black race? So why would, you know, and then there's certain the religions that feel, yeah, I, I hear thought. you. But that, that's that's kind of yeah. that that's kind of extremely thought. old school, thought. right? Yeah. But it exists. It, it's I don't think it's more prevalent now than it was back in the day. Um, I think it's diluted a bit. That school of thought, anyway. Um, well, Barry, I'd like to thank you. I, this is an interesting comment. I noticed you all didn't ask me, so I don't have to comment. Well, have and you? it's the end yeah. of the show, and it's my show. <laughs> no, I'm interested. Too. We got a couple of seconds. Know, you want to know whether or not I date outside my race? Yes. Or had a crush at any time? Anything like crush that? is different now. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know about different. dating. <laughs> well, right now, since uh, Idris Elba is not mm. available, but... It's not outside your race. I believe in personality <laughs> character, so... If I meet somebody, I'm open. I'm just open. I'm just open. Okay. She'll I'm talk to him. That means she'll start to talk to yeah. him. Yeah. You hear I'm that? I'm open. Media. Oh, yeah. I'm open. Um, uh, Brenda public. Kamen is open. She's because open. when you get my and age. And available. <laughs> you, why am I available now? Oh. Come on. Uh, anyway, right. ladies and gentlemen, he said I'm available. <laughs> oh, yeah. boy. Thank you, Brenda. You thank me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, thank okay. you. So, everybody, join us next week. We have the ladies of Table Talk on Table Talk.